So we have to think of, uh, about that. And that the healthy age have to be much more involved in society with the change in the workforce. There aren't going to be so many younger people uh, and the healthy or older people have a much more important role to play in society. On the other hand, we have to recognize that uh, there is a group of the elderly, the frail elderly, which makes up about 15% of those over the age of 65, who due to uh, chronic diseases uh, have much diminished reserves and are at, uh, uh, at a greater risk of tipping off the frail balance they may be on into a state of dependency. When you're thinking of the healthy seniors, then they bring a lot. They have a lifetime of uh, experience and skills and resilience. They are playing a major role in our volunteer organizations as it is. And they have the past experience to build on and help in rebuilding after a disaster. On the other hand, you do have this vulnerable, frail elderly who have, in these disasters, have the highest death rates, double the rate of injury of a younger group, very much prone to falls in these uh, circumstances, such as ice storms or in uh, uh, earthquakes and things of that nature. And their cardiovascular disease is liable to be uh, markedly uh, deteriorated in the stressful circumstances that they're placed on uh, by such uh, disasters or the fact that they may not be able to uh, get to their uh, medications. And certainly other risk factors, and some of these are, are more physiological, if you like, rather than pathological, but uh, with aging you will get a decrease uh, in, in hearing, uh, accentuated by exposure to loud uh, noise at a younger age, and uh, the older uh, uh, veterans would have had uh, uh, gun uh, um, uh, impact or fire, gun firing impact on their hearing, whilst the current younger generations are going to be uh, uh, deaf due to the various uh, exposures to rock music, etc. And these other, other things will uh, cause some problems. And this is associated with uh, chronic diseases, uh, which in of themselves may be well controlled, but may lead to uh, deficiencies in physical mobility, or in some cases in, in cognitive uh, uh, awareness. And all these will put this uh, uh, group with chronic diseases at greater risk. Also, you have the whole question of uh, socioeconomic issues. Now, if you want to grow old gracefully, it's much better to be wealthy than to be poor. If you're wealthy, you can uh, compensate for a lot of the issues that will occur. But if you're on a very low income, below the poverty line, if you're living on your own, uh, you may well be invisible. Uh, sometimes you may be in touch with various uh, agencies. But and by and large, uh, you know, in 9-11, uh, one of the major issues was no one knew where the elderly at-risk patients were afterwards. And how can you get aid to people if you don't know where they are or that they do need help? So that's one of the problems. Uh, society is still, I think, has a very ageist uh, approach. It's an interesting uh, ism that uh, you know, if you're racist, you're not going to change into that race, or if uh, you don't like people of a different color, you're not going to change your color. But if you live long enough, you're going to be elderly yourself. So everyone should have a vested interest in uh, trying to do away with ageism and the negative stereotypes that seem to be attached to the elderly. And they're not perceived as a priority, but at least Sean's uh, group uh, su suggested that they would put them as a high priority for admission to a hospital, which uh, struck me as uh, being interesting. Uh, and in some of the other focus groups we've taken a part in, it was very interesting, the focus group for the elderly here in Toronto, uh, or if you're dealing with people who are elderly activists, if you like, or if they're uh, work
work in the field, they are very, very much uh, in favor of every elderly person should have the same access as anyone else. But when we went to Peterborough and spoke to a group there, they were far more open to saying, well, no, well, you know, we've had a good innings. Um, maybe other people should have priority in this. And I think it's, it's one of these discussions that we should have. We know resources are going to be limited. Who does get access to them? And should age in of itself be a criterion? And if anyone mentions that it should be, there's usually a, a, a large outcry, a, a cry about that. And I think we have to remember that someone who has aged uh, very well uh, will do well with medical interventions. But you have to balance that, do you say, because someone's uh, 80 and you've got to balance that against someone who's in their 30s. Even if they're single, and uh, the people who answered the, 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 that uh, phone didn't seem to think they were a very worthy group for some reason. So uh, these are discussions that we should have. Now, uh, there was an international uh, group met in Madrid in 2002 to make recommendations for a plan of action on aging. And they asked for equal access, not more but not less. And uh, they were just looking at the sort of basic needs of food, shelter, medical care, and indeed other services. So I think that might be the official position of the sort of uh, aging, international aging groups on this. Uh, but that, again, we need to discuss that. And looking at emergency preparedness for seniors, or indeed for uh, everyone else, you really need to know the risk. You need to have a plan of how you would get out of your house in an emergency, which uh, is the best way of what, what to do. And you should have a kit for keeping going for 72 hours. And there are these available, for, I think St. John Ambulance have one, and various other groups uh, can. Uh, and um, I'm afraid I haven't got one myself, but I keep on telling people they should, should have these things. And these are a couple of uh, websites that talk about that. Mm. Hospitals are a particular issue when it comes to disasters because obviously you're going to get an increased demand on the hospital services. You're going to have more injuries or whatever, and the hospital is going to have to uh, make uh, decisions of prioritizing uh, the use of the various things. And ventilators come for home. It to mind is one, uh, one issue, which was uh, one of the key issues in the uh, recent uh, uh, pandemic alert as to um, you know, when they were being very uh, much utilized in Winnipeg in particular. And again, we were dealing with younger patients at that time. It's, uh, it wasn't a question of a very elderly, frail people who had little chance of recovery. These were 